Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the webinar by Faculty of Engineering, Built, Envir Built Environment and Information Technology, Masa University. My name is Nora Shida and I'm a lecturer in this faculty and I will be serving you as the moderator for today. Today, we will be hearing a presentation from IRTS Site Hairi Site Abbas. The title of the webinar is Traffic Impact Assessment, TIA Study for the Sustainable Transportation Planning. Before we start with the webinar, I would like to give a brief information regarding our speaker today. Uh, the IRTS Site Hairi Site Abbas holds a Bachelor in Civil Engineering and Master in Civil Engineering. He was registered as a professional engineer with the Board of Engineers Malaysia, BEM, and as a professional technologist with Malaysian Board of Technologies, MBOT. He became a corporate member of Institute of Engineers Malaysia, IEM, and was an active, active as committee member in the Highway Transportation Engineering Technical Division. He has experience in academic sector involvement in management, administration, research, teaching and learning activities and industry engineering practice in the civil engineering area, especially in the traffic, highway and transportation engineering specialization. We are proud to have you to, here with us today. Without further ado, I would like to invite our speaker, IRTS Site Hari Site Abbas. Please welcome. Okay, thank you, moderator. Assalamualaikum and very good morning to all of you. So, uh, so before we go to our uh, webinar, so I would like to say thank you to Masa University for inviting me to give the webinar title on Traffic Impact Assessment or we call TIA study for Sustainable Transportation Planning. Okay, uh, this is our presentation outline. Uh, I will start with the introduction of myself, uh, just a little bit. And then we go to the introduction, what is TIA? Then we go to the guidelines, TIA requirement and criteria, TIA methodology, TIA content, and the last is the conclusion. Okay, just uh, I think moderator already uh, introduce uh, myself, but uh, just again, uh, my education background, uh, I have a master, bachelor and diploma in civil engineering. And my working experience, uh, right now I'm a senior traffic engineer at Prunding Atto Traffic Center Bahad. And before this, uh, I'm also as a lecturer and head of program uh, in at Infrastructure University Kuala Lumpur. Before I joined uh, the, the academician last time, I uh, transportation engineer and also traffic engineer lah, at the consultant company. And when I'm pursue study in master in civil by research, actually I become a research assistant. Lah. So my research interest uh, is on, of course, traffic, highway, and transportation engineering. <laughs> okay, actually for today webinar, it look like uh, our a lot of technical term. So especially for those who are taking the civil engineering. So uh, maybe you all know lah, uh, about all of this, but for those who you don't know maybe we, i will share uh, this one is like a sharing session lah, to 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 all lah. okay uh i just want to highlight here uh about as you know we have a uh, four main branch of engineering civil mechanical electrical and chemical lah. so for civil lah, there is a, a lot of uh i can say the 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 the, the, the specialized or branch lah. So my my branch here is more focused on traffic, highway, and transportation. Okay. Uh, every time before this, uh, when when I'm lecture to the student, I I always show this uh this flow lah. This I I can say the flow uh chart for the 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 profession of the traffic, highway, and transportation lah. 
Okay, uh, for our webinar, we actually focus on this part. Eh. Okay, you imagine, eh, uh, let's say eh, we have uh, uh, a new highway or new road built in the our area. So, before we want to do this highway or this road, of course, the, the first thing we need to do is the planning. Eh. So, uh, that's why... Uh, uh, okay, so the first thing is the planning. So for today webinar, I'm focusing about this part only because uh, our construction or what we call this, uh, the, the operation of the highway, there, there is a stage, stage by stage. So after planning, we have a design. After design, we have the construction and after we construct that road or construct the highway, the highway will be open and will be operate and managed. And for do, for all this stage, planning, design, construction, operation and management, uh, if you if you are uh, going all this stage, you got all the experience in the field, in the analysis and the project. And if you uh, want to do uh, R&D, uh, research and development, uh, Normally, when you are pursue study on master or PhD level, so you are doing in this area. Lah. So, for today, I just focus on the planning part. Lah. All right, we go to the first one. Uh, it's about introduction. Lah. Okay, what is the TIA? Eh? Actually, TIA uh, is the short form of uh, the word traffic impact assessment. Lah. So, a traffic impact assessment uh, or analysis is specialized traffic study that determine the potential traffic impact of any of developments. It is including description of the scope and intensity of the proposed project and a sum summary of the project impact and any required mitigation measure that help to accommodate the development. So TIA is the important tool used to determine the impact of traffic generated from a proposed site development project on the surrounding rock and transportation system. It did identify the needs for mitigation measured for transportation system to reduce congestion as well as to maintain or improve the road safety. Okay, uh, traffic should be one of the major consideration in the planning of new development or upgrading of the existing development. So TIA should start at early stage, at early planning stage of the project including site selection stage. So early of participation of TIA assessor will contribute towards the preparation of a more responsive and cost-effective site plan. Okay, uh, to summarize here, okay, when we have a new development, new development here, I can set here, maybe a new building, new uh, shopping complex, new school, new residential area. So before this new development uh, will be construct, the first thing is we need to have this TIA. Lah. We need to have the traffic impact assessment. So after this, I will show you uh, TIA is the one of the checklist uh, that the authority need to approve before the drawing or uh, before you you will do the detailed design so if this TIA not approved in the in the uh, uh, submission part means the construction cannot be begin so that's why TIA is important okay we go to the guideline okay uh, TIA has been applied in Malaysia early the stage of 90s Although it has been made mandatory by the Malaysian government at that time, it has been accepted as a used tool to assume the developed impact. So the first TIA guideline uh, actually was proposed in 2005 and they have revised uh, by the Road of Engineering Association of Malaysia or we call RIM. So this is the, what we call the, the previous one guideline from the RIM. And now we have a new or latest guideline for traffic impact assessment 
published by the Jabatan Kerja Raya Malaysia lah, Public Work Department as an proof of this uh, RIM guideline. Lah. So this guideline called the uh, ATJ 38 stroke 2018. Any uh, TIA report, we use this as a guideline or manual lah, to, to follow uh, in our report. So the evaluation of the or the review process of TIA report will be done by the engineering department uh, either in local authority or either in the Jab uh, JKR, Jabatan Kerja Raya. Okay, this one uh, we talk about the, I can say about the, uh, like the, the consultant, eh, consultant company that can submit this TIA report. Eh. Okay, uh, what is the qualification uh, of the this uh, submission? Okay, the submitting person is the qualified civil engineering, eh, uh, sp specialized in traffic, highway and transport engineering who is registered with the Board of Engineer Malaysia as a PEPC, a practicing engineering a practicing certificate. And of course, uh, you have a minimum six years of experience in civil or traffic engineering and also minimum at least three years in the TIA project. With, you need to attend a formal training courses, either traffic study or traffic impact assessment study, uh, trip generation manual, trip engineering software, and also uh, other related training courses that uh, organized by the Board of Engineer, Public Work Department, Highway Planning Division, Malaysian Highway Authority, Institute of Engineer Malaysia, and also Road Engineering Association Malaysia. And my, maybe also uh, courses that uh, under Institute of High Learning, lah, either IPTA or RPTS. Lah. And that company or that consultant also need to register by, uh, with the Ministry of Finance under the Traffic Study or Transport Network, which is applicable for whatever that relevant to traffic engineering. Lah. So this one normally when when the consultant uh, want to get a, a project or the job from the government side. So the consultant need to register uh, with the MOF. Ah. Okay, so what is the TIA requirement or criteria? Lah? Okay, uh, TIA are next as each land use activity or any type of development of generated traffic. So there is, uh, there is uh, five, uh, I can say, uh, criteria lah, that you need to produce the TIA. So if you don't, if you not have these five criteria, mean you don't need to submit lah. You don't need to do this uh, TIA report to submit to the authority. Eh. So what is the criteria? Okay, the first one here, uh, the first criteria is the peak hour trip generation, uh, commuter pit. So the trigger level here, if you have about 150 added vehicle per hour in both way on the road. Second one is the off-peak hour trip generation. Generator peak occur that off-peak period. So trigger level, if you have about 200 added vehicle per hour, both direction in the existing road. Okay, the third one here, size of the residential development so when client or developer want to plan to have a residential uh, area a residential plot let's say the 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 number of uh, units more than 200 if more than 200 means the requirement of tia need to be lah, need to be done lah. Okay, number four is the size of the commercial development. Eh? So if your gross floor area or GFA uh, more than 45 square feet, 45,000 square feet, so you need to have this TIA report. So normally commercial area here, shopping complex, 
uh, office or whatever that that area more than this they need to have this TIA lah. and the last one here uh, the last one here is requirement ap approving authority lah. so the trigger level here means may impose specific trigger level as deemed necessary so this one if the authority authority here means uh, JKR public department or any local authority lah, uh, like uh, DBKL, MBSA, MPSJ. So if they they request to the client, to the to the developer, or to the uh, someone want to submit their development. So if let's say lah, all these criteria they 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 not meet, but authority ask. So uh, that part uh, project also need to submit the TIA report lah. Because uh, criteria number five here is uh, where the approving authority deem fit or necessary TIA be imposed, even if the trigger level is does not be reached. Lah. So this is the criteria for uh, number five. Lah. Okay, uh, next. Lah. Uh, for the pro post the new development, the, so the developer will need to engage a traffic consultant in order to prepare and submit the TI report as a part of development order or DO approval. Lah. Okay, uh, this is a two example. Lah. Uh, example checklist lah, in Bahasa, in Malay, in Bahasa. Okay, if you look this part uh, under OAC and PKB. Lah. So, you see uh, in number three. Lah, Laporan, laporan sokongan lah. Okay, uh, of course lah, in civil we have geotechnical, uh, soil, kerja tanah. And another one is this one lah. Laporan penilaian kesan lalu lintas, TIA. and the others uh, so that authority or local authority will go through on the that report before they approve the 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 kebenaran melancang okay this is another one example lah uh, i think this one is from dbkl lah dewan bandar kuala lumpur so the checklist number then ah uh, this one lah Dua, la, dua salinan laporan TIA, Traffic Impact Assessment. Lah. So, the same thing. Lah. You need to submit this TIA before the approve for the, the planning uh, on that development. So, if all checklist okay, mean approve, then they can proceed lah for the construction of development. Lah. Okay, this is the TIA process, the flow chart. So, okay, based on this flow chart, uh, you can see who is the uh, what we call the involver. Uh. So, if you are the developer side or client side, uh, this one. Uh. So, if you have the project or development, so you have commenced the develop development of planning so as a client you are engaged the consultant and also including the traffic engineering consultant and then uh, you the client developer mentioned to the uh, consultant architect uh, the team of that project and then they they need to prepare the preliminary site layout plan lah. so in traffic eh, in traffic consultant lah, so they are carry out of TIA. So after they carry out the detail of TIA, uh, they I will explain the next uh, slide. How they how what is the the, the step uh, to to do the TIA? Okay. Uh, when they do the TIA, uh, they have a they need to review and modify site layout plan where it's necessary uh. So. We have a developer, traffic, town planner, client meeting discussion. 
So in traffic part, the traffic will will cons will advise we consult on the traffic issue. Uh, maybe for example, maybe the 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 access in out on the proper development is not uh, means it's not okay to go in, in and out to that area. So traffic consultant maybe suggest uh, to put in other another access. And then that, 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 that all of this will be discussed together before we finalize the TIA report. So all the TIA report will be included in the development proposal report for submission to the authority. So uh, when we submit, means the planner submit uh, all the document, uh, the authority will evaluate the TIA report. If okay, approve lah. Uh, approve, uh, normally they, they mention uh, tiada halangan lah, uh, means Okay, maybe there, there is a, a the approver they mention condition. Uh, condition here, the client or the developer need to fulfill uh, before they, they want to approve. Uh, there is a certain certain uh, condition. Uh. Okay, let's say the TIA not approved, not acceptable. Uh. So we uh, TIA report need to return to the developer to the client with the uh, query and comment from the authority. So we discuss, we check back, and then we modify again the layout or the meditation measure. So if the client developer agree, then we modify, then we submit back lah. until all uh, requirement fulfilled, then the authority will approve that uh, TIA report. Lah. Okay, we go to the TIA methodology. All right. Uh, this TIA methodology have a four stage. Uh. Let me zoom in. Okay. Okay, the first stage here uh, is data collection and literature review. Uh. So, on this part, we review all the available data. Uh. Uh, the plan, the drawing, the information. We do this kind of the study. Lah. And the next one, we do the traffic count survey. So this one, we need to do the data collection on that uh, area on the proposed development to know the existing. Lah. Then we go also to the site. Uh, site condition area we need to check what is the existing one available on on uh, surrounding in the proposed development uh, beside that we can have the uh, we also can also in the google map or whatever have in the software okay the next stage is the analysis of existing uh. so on this area on this uh, stage we do the establish the existing traffic condition uh, relate to the land use pattern. Uh. So in this part, we, we we do the analysis on the existing to see what is the level of service on that uh, existing road without any proposed development yet. Okay, the next one, stage on forecasting future traffic. Uh. Okay, in this part, we do detailed analysis using uh, traffic software. So at the end of uh, presentation, I will show you some uh, example, what is the software that we use in the traffic. So in this area, in this stage, uh, we calculate, we analyze uh, the, what is the impact, uh, let's say the development is open up then the traffic will come come in and come out so we need to know what is the impact on that area if let's say there is a junction uh, what is the performance of that junction if is it okay or not okay so if not okay what is the meditation what is the recommendation so all of this we will need to suggest we need to analyze and 
we need to inform lah to the client so that the client understand and if they can provide the 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 cost or the solution then we can go lah and then we have the uh, stage of future future here means they they need to have the uh, future traffic grow so let's say the 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 project will be complete three or four years so what is the impact after that another 10 years or another 20 years so we need to know the the the, the forecasting uh. and the last one uh, is about report submission so uh, in this part we will do the vegetation measure and also the recommendation uh, for for that TIA report uh. Okay, this uh, the next one is about the content, uh, the TIA content, uh, the detail of the how we produce the report. Uh. So as I mentioned just now, uh, we have a map, we have a plan, we have the layout, drawing. So all of this we get uh, from the architecture, uh, from the architect. So we study we we the, the location uh, on that area so as i mentioned we do the data collection so existing traffic data is based on the analysis and the foundation for forecasting future traffic volume so the purpose of this data collection to gather and to collect the up-to-date and also the accurate traffic data so most study uh, obtain the daily traffic volume and also peak hour turning volume uh, for the uh, data collection. Nah. Okay, uh, we also have uh, uh, I can say the previous data RTVM RTV uh, road traffic volume Malaysia. So now uh, all the consultant or even though public uh, can assess with this uh, online RTVM uh, every state in Malaysia. So the last traffic data we, we have uh, in 2021. And also we have the hard copy. Lah. Hard copy. Uh, but now we can access with the online system okay that one is the history traffic data we need to do a traffic count so if possible you need to do the traffic count uh, at the intersection all the direction because uh, every direction will show you the traffic Volume, uh, volume, and this volume is impact for future. Lah. Let's say the development uh, will be construct uh, on that area, then there is a traffic will generate, and this traffic generate we counted on that direction. Of course, will be increased. So if increase, when do we do analysis, there is a, a result on that. If the result is uh, very risk, so, so we need to do uh, some mitigation. Okay, then we have a uh, site recognition, recognition here. So it means we need to know the existing, the link road, the intersection. Uh, we need to know the width, the ROW, right of way, the design and speed limit there, the traffic control, the, if we have a traffic light signal, we need to know. Lah. Uh, to set to 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 do the site recognize. Let's say we have a, a uh, sorry, yeah, I think uh, this area. So we we need to check either using the Google Earth and also go to the to that area lah, to 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 do site recognition. Lah. Okay, then uh, we go to the next one is the traffic count. Lah. So as I mentioned just now, the objective for conducting a uh, traffic count survey, if you want to know the uh, 
movement every of direction in the existing flow lah. and then all the this uh, direction traffic we will do the uh, junction capacity performance lah. and we need to know also what kind of traffic count survey lah. of course the survey we'll do in working weekday lah. But let's say if the proposed development, if something like a uh, commercial or retail, so you need to do the survey in weekend. Weekend here either Saturday or Sunday. Okay. Uh, for normal traffic count, you will do in weekday. But normally we will pick the day in the middle of the weekday let's say our working day is uh, monday to friday eh? so either we can have tuesday wednesday or thursday and the best one maybe wednesday eh? okay if if some state uh the the working day start start in sunday eh? uh, in Johor, kelantan terengganu Kedah. So, so, if you uh, start in the uh, Sunday, uh, the best one is the Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday or Thursday. And for weekend, of course, the weekend, it might be in uh, Saturday, uh, sorry, in uh, Friday or sun Saturday. Uh, that one for different state. Uh. Okay. In place where there is no significant rise in the traffic activity throughout most of the year, except the occasional school holiday, major festival, religious fest festival, or off season of irregular travel pattern where traffic become abnormal, then the traffic survey shall be carried out on a normal work day. Meaning, here, you cannot do traffic count on this uh, of course uh, now we first uh, so we do this traffic count in the school holiday because the pattern travel pattern on school holiday is different so that's why uh, you need to do in normal day lah, I mean normal hour even though last time when we have a uh, what we call COVID, uh, pandemic COVID. So it's value uh, we need to adjust. So that's why traffic count need to do in the normal one. So this is a traffic count method. Uh, you can do manual screen count. You can do the uh, OD survey. You can use pneumatic tube. Even though uh, nowadays we have a uh, technology, uh, we using uh, uh, on YouTube. Something like that. Lah. So that's why uh, manual one need to do for the verification. Lah. But depend on the situation. Lah. Uh, Sometimes high traffic volume, of course, you need to more time to, to check in the video recording. Lah. Okay, when we do the traffic count, we need to uh, make it this uh, vehicle into unit PCU. So unit PCU here is passenger car unit. Lah. So what I can say is the PCU, you need to equivalent, equivalent whatever vehicle on the road, equivalent to the one PCU, mean one car. Lah. For example, uh, there is a different different equivalent factor here. If you are in the rural area, if you are urban area, you are 
have a roundabout area and also traffic signal design area lah. so you need to know lah which area you are doing the traffic count so i give example lah. Uh, i think you can see this uh, photo lah. so four motorcycle is equal to one car lah. so whatever we count after uh when we count directly yeah, we make it four on the form later on we need to do analysis we need to convert this number into the pcu so you need to times this factor lah. so look, of course when you have four you time 0.22 then you get that value because at the end your value is PCU, lah, PCU unit lah. And you can see lah, the 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 bigger one, bigger value lah, medium lorry, heavy lorry, and also the bus. You can see the factor become higher lah. Okay, this one I think I have done this one. Okay, what's next? After you count, after you convert in PCU, you need to find the peak hour so we have to am and pm morning and evening so from this uh morning and evening uh, you need to uh know what time and what value in pcu so this is the uh, example uh, uh graph uh you can see uh, this is the total one uh, the total P hour in the morning and P hour in the evening. So based on this P hour, we can conclude that in the evening is higher compared with the morning, about 15.3%. So we know that in the morning, the highest, uh, the highest year uh, somewhere uh, around five to six and in the morning uh, around 9 to 10 uh, in the morning so when you do the further analysis you can conclude either evening is a peak one or you can make it a n and p n for your report so this value is a high number in the peak hour time that what if let's say uh, this uh, you know, when you have a higher maximum number, you include in your analysis. So this number actually, uh, if you have a low number, means that analysis is become okay lah. Okay, then we have the establish the existing traffic. Okay, we also refer uh, another manual we call highway capacity manual. Uh, this highway capacity manual, uh, they have term we call LOS. Uh. LOS here is the level of service. Uh. So the level of service in the given of stretch of road will calculate by taking of the volume uh, and also capacity. Uh. Volume versus, sorry, not versus, uh, volume over capacity. Uh. So when you have the volume, volume here means the number of vehicle, lah, the number of uh, the, 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 the vehicle in PCU uh, and the capacity on the road. So the LOS represent uh, letter A to F. A represent the best one, F represent the worst one. Lah. So means here, when you know that the level service is F, I mean the road, the risk is higher, lah, means they have a traffic congestion there. Lah. So that's why you need to do something on that area. Because uh, if authority C, F, fail one, means you need to to, to solve. Lah. You means the traffic engineer need to, to, to solve this problem and to advise the developer and client lah, how to how to make it traffic uh, possible uh, means traffic become okay uh, on the area okay uh, 
the next one is trip generation eh? okay trip generation here is the re to refer the additional traffic within the study area or proposed uh, development and this trip generation rate we use uh, also using this guideline the guideline uh, is the Malaysian trip generation manual 2020 uh, prepared by the highway planning division ministry of work Malaysia uh, they have a hard copy book and they also have this system uh, online which means here uh, okay i mentioned uh, the first one uh, the, the the trigger of the TIA report how to uh, miss the level of the, the trigger so let's say we know the number of uh, unit let's say residential they they have about 500 unit developed on that area so this 500 how many traffic will be go into that proper development so that's why we use this trip generation to know actually what is the value in PCU will enter and out to the proposed development so how we calculate we, we use based on this trip generation manual there is a different different uh, I can say different different category uh, because it depend on what proposed development you have maybe you have a uh, apartment you have a uh, residential area in uh, terrace bungalow or maybe hotel uh, maybe uh, office stadium uh, any type of proper development everything in this uh, guideline uh. so you can set the land use you have a subcategory you have the group and they have variable here either tsf is the uh gfa uh, growth floor area and we have also unit so when you put the the value there and they can calculate then they will give that value for you to do a further analysis okay when you have a next one uh we have a trip distribution and trip assignment uh. So trip distribution is the whatever trip generated to the proposed development, they will distribute in the road network system. So based on the existing tra traffic pattern and also the general assessment of the likely destination and origin in the trip in the study area. Uh, and also the future of directional trip division was determined. Trip assignment uh, at this stage, the total volume of trip will produce and attract to the proper development and the direction of flow would be have determined the subsequent step is the assignment process whereby the generated trip are assigned to the network in the study area so this process is essential before the assessment or impact on the road in the study area can be carried out so in this part you will assign how many percent let's say this are your proposed development you have uh, access in out here and also access in out here so you will do some assignment and you distribute how many percent in of course in out we, we, we use 100 percent so based on the traffic count here you will predict how many percent will be in in this part number one how many percent will be in also in this area and the same thing if you in there is a out uh, so up in out you must balance uh, then will be total up 100 percent uh. okay now uh, the next one we have a uh, impact analysis okay according to the guideline the traffic impact shall be assumed each and every one of the designated location so the designated location shall be include all the point connection between the development and also the road network then there is a section 
either existing or future road lah. junction and location and also the traffic conflict in the study area and has been identified by the authority lah, approving authority and also the engineering consultant lah. so for example uh, if you do analysis uh, at the junction uh, you will know the level of service lah. so if you look this junction lah, example lah, so remember i mentioned the worst one is f lah. so so that's why you you when you analyze they given level also be f here this one d this one d yeah okay uh this uh detail one the let's say junction a there is a movement uh, one until eight okay this is a degree of saturation v over c the delay Q distance and the level of service. Uh. So Q, uh, the more normally the more average of delay, the the level of service become F. Uh. Okay, this also uh, you need. I mentioned just now you need to do a forecast. Uh. So you need to do a projection. Uh, at least 10 years after the completion. So let's say, uh, let's say, uh, I give example. Uh, this year is 2022. Uh, expected to be complete, that development is 2025. Okay, you will do 10 years after 2025, mean 2025. What is the analysis for the debt 10 years? Uh? So is it okay or is it means get f uh, so you need to write up all the analysis and you need to discuss uh, with the developer and client and you as a traffic engineer will will advise uh, what what need to do uh, what needs to do here i give example is maybe uh, maybe before this that junction no traffic light uh, maybe the solution you need to put traffic light okay that one one recommendation maybe the road before this is one lane you can be increased another two lane or three lane depend on the area lah. okay maybe uh, you you can change before this is the uh, four-legged junction maybe you want to convert to roundabout depend on the location lah. if the 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 location size Okay, then you can propose. So, uh, yeah, means, of course, you, you suggest you must have the analysis. So, in the software, you can make it that kind of uh, concept design. Then you can show, okay, if let's say you propose the traffic light, the level of service better. Better here, I not say it's A, but it might be from F to C or from F to D. Or maybe to A is very good lah. So you you try to convince the uh, the, the client before 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 proceed to the authority part because of course lah, you, if you submit then you not discuss with the client uh, then you got problem lah because you you not have a I can say the win win situation of discussion lah. Uh, okay, this is uh, another uh, another meditation module. Beside you adding the lane, traffic light, roundabout, and another one is to build the flyover, uh, a flyover or the directional ramp. Because when you put this directional ramp, you not make it traffic light in this area. If you make it traffic light, then you are make it a congestion in this part and also this part. So I give also one example lah. Uh, the scenario uh, we have scenario one, two, three, four, five. Uh. One W O D A is without proper development. Scenario number two with the proper development that complete five, six, seven. Actually, this uh, example uh, there is a uh, thirteen plot to be completed. Okay, 2032, 10 years after uh, this year is uh, 
without development and with development. This is the with development that we propose the directional ramp. Okay, you see, yeah, we, we focus on scenario number four and scenario number five. Uh. Okay, let's say that development in 2022, all the plot, all the plot of the area is constructed, complete and open to the to the public or to the uh, everyone. Okay, based on the analysis, the level of service is F on that junction. Actually, the uh, in this case, uh, we, they have a four-legged junction. We try to propose additional lane, uh, free flow lane, everything. But when you have a, a lot of demand of traffic flow, there is a level of service F. Then after we propose the directional ramp, uh, the directional ramp here of flyover is something like this. Uh. Uh, this is not the, the project, but the example. So when you when, when we try to propose the ramp, the level of service become better. A M F eh, sorry C P M is uh, B lah. means better lah rather than F right uh, so that's why uh, the additional of this recommendation is good for the client and developer and they also need to know lah uh, either this proposed level the uh, ram is feasible or not to doing on site because if the site have a uh, space it could be can be done uh, for the this ram uh. okay i think uh, i end to the conclusion here uh, okay the main key parameter in traffic impact assessment that we need to achieve uh. so of course the first, you need to determine the existing traffic condition, the future condition with the development, future condition with the development in place. Sorry, without and with. Lah. So I mentioned just now, without, let's say if no development on that area, what is the LOS? Let's say you have the development, what is the LOS? Maybe some place, if you... If, if you think logical, when you have a new development, of course, there is a different pattern traffic there. But sometimes, if you don't have a development also, the traffic will be increased based on the traffic growth. And authority need to do something on that area. So that's why when, when you have a new development, authority and also the developer can, can um, work together that they can solve this matter uh, for the public society surrounding that area. Okay. Number two is to estimate the traffic likely to be generate the proper development. So I mentioned just now, whatever development on that area, you estimate. Uh, estimate here based on the guideline that we have, manual, uh, trip generation manual. So based on that manual, we can estimate how many numbers and that numbers of traffic will be counted for the analysis. Okay, number three, to assess the impact of additional traffic on the existing and also future. So this one, uh, mostly that you do the analysis. Uh, what is the impact? Current one and future. Uh, and then you will identify what is the roadway improvement and also it might be you need to change the, the size of plan of the proper development to have a minimized traffic impact on the surrounding area. Of course, new development, no impact, right? but there is a, at least you minimize the, the, this kind of traffic. Uh, then uh, without any, any proposal or any recommendation, then they will make it a lot of uh, traffic congestion on that area. So that's why you try to minimize so that the surrounding uh, become uh, smooth. Okay, I think this is, uh, just, I just mentioned just now, uh, just want to show the, uh, the, what we call the software that we can use for analysis. 
So we have uh, Indro Emi. Uh, as this one more on the transportation forecasting system for planning in urban, regional and national movement. Then we have a PTV VSM. This one for conduct the traffic analysis forecast GIS and also model of all user and including the public transport. Okay, uh, this two for macro model, this is for micro model. So we have, uh, we can use the Sidra intersection. Uh. This one, we use this software for junction analysis. Uh, certain, certain junction uh, means we are focusing only that junction. And then we have M soon this one for modeling in the real traffic simulation and also the PTV VSIM, this one for micro simulation uh, on that uh, part of area. Uh, I think that's all for me. Thank you very much for your attention. Oh. Okay, now we have come to the end and part of the presentation. Thank you very much, sir, for addressing this topic with your wide knowledge. And we also thank our audience for active participation. Hopefully, the presentation was beneficial for everyone. On behalf of Masai News and our faculty, we would like to thank you for joining us today. Thank you for your time and your patience. Until next time, I'm Nora Shida. Assalamualaikum. Thank you.